Season 4 of Stranger Things was full of shocking revelations. It was, it was you. But it also left some questions unanswered. Such as, what happened to Vecna? Last we saw him, he had two Molotov cocktails thrown at him and was shot with a shotgun several times. And let's not forget he also fell from a really high window. Seems like he should be dead, but not this time. Later in the episode, Will confirmed that the villain is hurt but still alive. So now we know Vecna will be the main baddie in Season 5. And this also tells us that the guy probably has nine lives. Years ago, Little L bravely defeated him and threw him into another dimension. His body was completely burnt, but he survived. Who knows what he even ate there? But it only made Vecna stronger. Now, his body has been destroyed once again. Yet he might still be living in the spore-like particles of the Mind Flayer. And it should take a while till he gets his physical form back. In fact, it could be the reason for the teased time jump in Season 5. After all, Vecna isn't one to act spontaneously. He needs to thoroughly plan his next step. He certainly won't stop, especially now when the gate to Hawkins is open. And speaking of this gate, what's the deal with the library? Let me remind you that the equivalent of the Hawkins Public Library in the Upside Down initially appeared back in the first season. It served as a nest for the Demogorgon, where the monster brought his victims. The library became Barb's final resting place. And when Joyce and Hopper came to rescue Will, they also found him there. Fast forward to the season 4 finale, we see this library once again at a very special place. As Vecna's gate opens up, four paths converge in the center right next to it, and the building partly collapses. Sure, this could just be a coincidence, but there's some symbolism to this place, and we know that usually with the Duffer Brothers, every little detail matters. So we'll see if Hawkins Public Library actually has a hidden meaning. Now on to every single Stranger Things fan's burning question… Will Max survive? Well, the Duffer Brothers reassured us that she's alive, although she's in a pretty bad state. Yeah, she's brain dead, but she's <laughs> alive. Brain dead and blind. And all of her bones broken, yeah. but she's doing, she's doing great. Sounds promising? Okay, at least Max isn't gone for good. But we still have no idea if and how she's going to wake up from her coma. After all, the fact that Eleven couldn't find her in the void was pretty scary. Does it mean that her brain is dead dead and Max will never come back? Or maybe her mind has been captured by Vecna? The latter is actually more probable because it would make sense for the storyline. After all, it might allow Vecna to keep Max as a hostage or use her body in some way to get to the main heroes. Whatever it is, we certainly hope that Eleven and everyone else will be able to save our beloved redhead. Because if they don't, fans might not forgive them. It's presumptuous of you. And now let's talk about another character whose fate is also quite unclear. What happened to Owens? Although he's not a main cast member, we're still worried about him. After all, the guy tried to save Elle quite a few times, so he deserves to live. Yet the fate of Dr. Owens was unclear in the finale. After Eleven crashed the US Army helicopter on the ground, everything around Nina was on fire. We saw Colonel Sullivan coming out of the premises alive and unhurt. So we can assume that everyone else who was underground survived as well, but it still doesn't tell us much about Owens. Last we saw him, he was badly beaten and handcuffed. It's unlikely that Sullivan would go as far as to kill the scientist. Yet in Season 5, we might find him in prison, being interrogated, or even tortured, to find out where Eleven might be hiding. What's more, it's likely that Owens will be instrumental in defeating Vecna. After all, since Papa's now dead, as in, really dead, he's the only person who understands Eleven's powers from a scientific point of view. And he might also help find answers to other questions that require a scientific approach. Like... Why is the Upside Down stuck in time? When Nancy realized that her room in the Upside Down looked exactly like it did three years before, it was quite a shock. No one expected it to be stuck in time, let alone on the day when Elle opened the gate in the lab, and the same day that Will disappeared. This weird fact actually confirms that Vecna is, for some reason, obsessed with time. 
Remember how his grandfather clock popped up all over the place? And he also ranted to Eleven about how much he detested the whole concept because he saw it as some rule that limited him. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades. So is it possible that in the Upside Down he created his own concept of time? Hopefully we'll find out in Season 5. Maybe the Hawkins gang will use it to somehow defeat Vecna. What if, for example, they do a time travel twist? They might try to go back to the day that Will disappeared and stop Elle from opening the gate in the first place. That would also help prevent all those deaths and dark events happening in the town. But to accomplish this or anything else, the gang will have to understand more about the Upside Down. Such as… Did Eleven create the Upside Down? Millie Bobby Brown herself once answered this question. I think that the alternate universe was always there. That is always going to be under Hawkins. I just think she has access to it, she said. So yeah, she doesn't think that Elle created that dimension. But since Millie, however much we all love her, isn't a Stranger Things writer, she can't know for sure. So the question remains. And it's still unclear whether the damned place existed before Elle threw Henry, slash one, slash Vecna into it. And we know that ever since she did it, Dr. Brenner trained her to open the gate, whether it was to find one in there or just to research the whole thing. Mad scientist that he was, it could be possible that he did it just out of curiosity. And we're also wondering if the dark dimension exists only in Hawkins, or if the entire world is at risk of demogorgons and other creatures jumping out and threatening everyone. Actually, the latter is probable because those monsters somehow got to the Soviet Union. Which leads us to the next question. What did the Russians do with the Demogorgons? Sure, we know that one of the things they did was arrange gladiator-like fights where the nasty creatures ate prisoners, and they also studied demodogs and probably experimented on them. But why? I mean, doing something. Anything with a creature that can tear you apart any second doesn't seem like a good idea. They probably wanted to turn the monsters into some kind of weapon, but it's unclear if they even realized how risky it was. Because in the end, all of those scientists and military men paid the highest price for their experiments. And God only knows how many more victims there would be if the Demogorgons got loose, if Hopper and the gang didn't return to kill them. Okay, now let's distract ourselves a bit from the alternate dimensions and monsters and talk about another side of the characters' lives. Love. Visit our awesome merch shop. We have branded t-shirts, hoodies, eco bags, and even phone cases. You can choose between dozens of unique and awesome designs. Click the link under the video and find your perfect match. Who will Nancy choose in the end? Up until Season 3, Nancy and Jonathan seem to be THE power couple of Stranger Things. But long distance sucks. And it especially sucked back in the 80s when people didn't have the internet, FaceTime, and all the other communication devices we have now. It was pretty easy to lose touch. That's exactly what happened to Nancy and Jonathan. And right at that moment, Steve showed up with his higher maturity, dream of having six little nuggets, and hairy chest. I keep telling him he needs to tame that jungle, but he claims the lady's digging. It's no wonder that the spark between them reignited. Nancy even defended Steve in one of the final scenes when Jonathan implied he was irresponsible. Did they just grow closer as friends, or is it foreshadowing of them getting back together? Natalia Dyer, who plays Nancy, was asked about it, and she said that her character probably just needs to take some time for herself. It's a bit complicated. Whatever happens, I would hope that she does it with integrity. Well, we all hope so. But the question still remains, who will Nancy choose? Steve or Jonathan? Or will Steve and Jonathan choose each other? Anyway, let's move on to the next question. What's really up with Will? There have been a lot of hints about his sexuality throughout the show. In Season 3, Mike stated that it's not his fault that Will didn't like girls. And in Episode 1 of the fourth season, eagle-eyed fans noticed that he did a school project on Alan Turing. He was an English mathematician known for breaking a very important code during World War II, and he was also gay. And of course, we all remember Will's dialogue with Mike where he explained how hard it is to be different. Noah Schnapp did a great job of portraying Will's struggles. Like all of us, he strives to find out what exactly is gnawing at the young man in Season 5. 
And at the same time, the actor likes the subtle way the issue has been handled so far. I think that's the beauty of it, that it's just up to the audience's interpretation. If it's Will just kind of refusing to grow up and growing up slower than his friends, or if he is really gay. But Will's sexuality isn't the only question we have about him, because we also don't know what role he's going to play in Season 5, and something tells us that it's going to be much bigger than in previous seasons. After all, Will has a close connection to the Upside Down, especially as it all began with his disappearance. So it'll be fitting to end everything with him as a key character. And here's someone else whose role in Season 5 will certainly be essential. What's next for Elle? She went from a weird girl with telekinetic abilities to a simple gal who gets bullied and has trouble making friends at school. And now, her powers are back and greater than ever before. Above all else, Elle can now work as a walking and talking crash cart as she managed to jumpstart Max's heart. In Season 5, let's hope she's even stronger, because otherwise, she won't be able to defeat Vecna for good. And during the tease time jump, Elle will probably train harder than ever for the battle of her life. What new powers do you think she'll get? Will she learn to do the things Mike mentioned in his tear-jerking speech? You can do anything! You can fly! You can move mountains! I believe that! I really do! Wouldn't that be awesome if that was a foreshadowing of Elle's future powers? And it'd be cool to see her in full Dark Phoenix mode with telekinetic abilities, super strength, and able to fly. And finally, an even bigger question. What's next for Hawkins? With the gate to the Upside Down wide open, wildflowers reduced to ashy dust, and spores flying around the town, seems like Hawkins and its people are in for a tough time. Besides, we know that Vecna's plan wasn't to just take over one small Indiana town. He wanted to have the entire world at his feet. So it's logical that all this destruction will extend outside of Hawkins. And yet, the Duffer brothers said that Season 5 will be based largely around the misfortunate town. Hopefully, we'll see how exactly the gang will prevent the effects from spreading to other places. Support Asa by sending a super thanks. Just click on the thanks button under the video and choose an amount to donate. Stay awesome, and remember, we value each one of you. Do you have answers to any of these questions or theories about what's going to happen next? Let us know in the comments below, and stay awesome!